This is code.org and let's talk about how a for loop works. For loops are fairly confusing, especially starting out. I've already dragged a for loop out here. I have a basic interface. We're not even going to worry about that for now. What I want to show you is just walk you through actually what's going on. So with my for loop, for var i is equal to zero. So right now I'm saying I have this i, this variable i, and it's equal to zero. I must always be less than four I plus plus means add one to I each time. So we start at zero, we're adding one to I each time until four, then we're done. I'm going to use a council log statement to show you what I mean, to show you what it is doing. So here we are. I'm just going to delete this and the quotes so it outputs the variable I. All right, let's hit run. And down here you can see kind of small zero, one, two, three, four. Now what's happening? I'm going to go this to two because it's easier to say that. All right, zero, one. So I starts at zero, as we said. Zero is less than two, I plus plus. So we're going to add to one I in a second, but all right. So we drop down I zero. Okay, and it prints out zero. Then it hits the bottom of our loop and says, oh, okay, I need to go back up here. Well, I, I need to add one to. So whatever I used to be equal to, well, I was equal to zero. Zero plus one is one. One is less than two. It drops in, prints out one, hits the bottom, goes back to the top and says, okay, I need to add one. I used to be equal to, oh, it was equal to one. One plus one is two. Is two less than two? And it says, nope, no, it is not. And now it is done with our loop. And it's the same thing if I do, well, four, for instance. Reset, run. Zoop, zoop, and it's going to go through four times starting at zero mind you right zero and then it says zero is less than four drops in prints out zero hits the bottom goes back to the top what's the old value zero okay well zero plus one right because plus plus means add one is one less than four yep and it will just keep going once it's done i want to show you what's going to go on here done da -da -da -da. and let's say if we had something before this as well start okay and you might have already guessed what's going to happen here. Run. So we'll print out this. It hits our loop. It repeats four times, all, zero to three, and then prints done. So anything below it will print after the fact. Now, how this can be used for, I mean, almost anything. If you want to check a lot of items at one time, you can loop through them. So say we have a list. And I'm just going to do something random here. Uh, bar x equals blank i'll go ahead and do a list of bar um fruit is equal to and then i'm gonna say apple orange oop i need these in quotes because it's a string if it was numbers i wouldn't orange apple orange and a pair we'll say okay so now I have three items in my list. Now I'm going to go up to four. This is going to be a problem, but let me show you. Council log fruit i. All right, let's hit run. Now lists start at zero. This is zero, index zero. This is index one. This is index two. It's kind of strange to say, but that's why when i is zero, it works and prints out apple. And we can have it show. So I'm going to print out fruit i, but before that, I'm going to say I plus in quote. So it prints this exactly. Boom. All right. Let me show blocks. So all I'm doing here is saying print the variable I, put this after it, and then print the fruit so we can see the number. See apples at zero, oranges at one, pear is at two, and then there's nothing here because there's only three things, zero, one, two. So I could put three here, but what happens if we come along and add to this list? It would be annoying to have to keep changing this number. So there's a way to save us from that. When you're working with for loops, you want to do dot length. If you're using a list and a for loop, this way it will always go to the size of the for loop. And the size of this loop is three, right? But watch. It's only going to go to two because the size of the list is three, which is great. I has to be less than three. I starts at zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two. And there's three items. So we get everything in the list. Now, how do you get this actually onto the screen? Well, let me get rid of a council log. I can do a set text. And just to show you the interface here, this is just a label. That's a text entry box, right? Text input. This is a button. 
and my text output's a text area. All right, so set text of, uh, oh, did I leave it? I shouldn't have, but apparently I named it text error. Normally I would name it text output, and what should I set it to? I'm gonna set it to, well, I can start with just I, right? We're just gonna see a two in this. Yep, now let's set it to fruits I. And now we'll just see pear. Oops, what did I do? Oh, it's fruit? Yeah. Now I'm just gonna see pear, which is the last item in our list. It prints out each thing in the list, but it goes so fast it covers up the old one. So if I wanna see multiple, right, I'm gonna do a, let's just do bar uh, str for string, right? So, and then what I'll do here then in this is, str is going to be equal to str plus fruit and then the index i okay so i'm adding to this string and then at the end instead of putting out just fruit i i will put out str my variable boom undefined interesting oh because i undefined it so let me say it's equal to nothing it's equal to an empty string now let's try boom all right, uh, one other thing, if you want to like split those up on different lines. Boom, okay, and boop, boop. That's a real quick way to walk you through working with for loops. And now you can go master and loop through everything. Oh, I wanna show you one more thing actually. You don't have to do i plus one. You could also do i equals i plus two. Okay, now it will count in twos. Let me show you, I'm gonna add a few things. Fake thing, okay? So now let's do this. Notice it's only gonna print apple, pear, and thing because it skips the odd numbers because it goes zero, two, six, or zero, two, four, and is done, right? After that, it's going all the way the length because of this. Pretty cool, pretty versatile. You'll see them a lot in code. Keep in mind, if you wanna use one loop inside of the other, that's okay, okay? So I would just not be able to use I again. J, J, usually J is the common one. And so now I have this, and I'm just gonna move this up here, and let's see. It should just print it out. Yep, each thing's getting printed out four times, because I's for the loop, we print out the same fruit, I, which is zero, four times because there's a loop inside a loop. Pretty versatile. Go make some awesome loop magic.